Okay, I'm going to shamelessly um, paint a uh, landscape in the style of Bob Ross. And the reason I'm doing it is that there is a video out there called, well, use Krita to paint in the style of Bob Ross. And the problem is that the guy that did that video, in my view, he uh, pretty much painted in the traditional digital style of Krita without actually, I mean, the final painting was kind of sort of in the style of Bob Ross, but the actual technique he used really wasn't, in my opinion. So I wanted to correct that. Well, how would I correct that? Step one would be, when Bob Ross painted, he generally primed his canvas with uh, a paint and he stole this idea, by the way, from Bill Alexander, who he sort of displaced on PBS. Um, but what he would do is he would prime his canvas with magic white. So now I've got a really big canvas here, by the way, just so you know. This is, um, let's see, yeah, 4,000 by 3,500. So you can see it's a, it's a pretty big canvas. And we'll see how that goes from a performance standpoint. It's actually kind of a bit of a test for the cartoon in terms of um, just kind of seeing how Krita does with really, really, really large um, background paintings, you know, such that, you know, if you were going to pan across the background, it would, it would work. So anyway, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, limit myself as well to one brush, okay? So this whole thing's got to be done with one brush. And I'm going to try to stick to colors kind of sort of uh, consistent with what Bob would do. So that means, so the reason that I um, primed the canvas, if you will, with a little bit of an off-white color was so that when I, so that I'm not fighting with the alpha. In other words, when I, when I use this brush, it blends quite naturally with the underlying prime primer color and that's what actually happens with oil paint when you you know you primed your canvas as Bob did with magic white so alright so now what I'm actually doing here is uh, in the particular video that I'm that I'm watching because I'm just I'm just basically paralleling Bob's painting and for what it's worth it's a it's a video called the old weathered barn Season 28, Episode 7. And I chose it more or less randomly. So, what I can see when I'm looking at the colors that Bob's using, um, obviously they're pretty earthy tones for the most part. And uh, what I was about to say is that in that video, he had already blocked in a great deal of the, the tree activity in the painting before he ever started the video. So if I'm going to parallel Bob Ross, I guess I kind of sort of need to get these trees blocked in. So I'm going to actually make my brush really big just to see what happens here. Okay. So uh, the video I mentioned earlier, and remember, you can always hit Control. And I'm sure as the painting progresses, I'll do this more than more and more, especially as the colors blend. Then you hit Control click, and you can just snag that exact color from your canvas, which is quite useful. Okay, so um, I started saying something and don't know what I said. Now this is interesting. Okay, yeah, it would be um, interesting to play around with the settings on this brush so that the directionality of it. Um, follows your stylus but again I think um, I wouldn't say that's cheating but the thing you can do is since this is horizontally oriented as you can see what you can do is um, and I guess this will be the one way that we will cheat because I can't rotate my brush I am going to allow myself to rotate my canvas okay fair enough that seems fair to me okay so now as we get a little higher in these trees what we see is um, a little bit more yellow, little orangey yellow working its way into the colors. So I'm going to start moving kind of fast here to just get this blocked in. 
So I am not, by the way, speeding up the the um the video. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna smack this in as fast as I can. I'm gonna turn this a little bit this way. Give this a little bit of an angle. Give my brush an angle. Okay. So my concept here is let's get the overall feeling of the of the layout kind of sort of there okay here we got uh, pretty much kind of the semblance of a tree here coming down like that so again what I'm trying to do is just block this in just emulate the overall composition of Bob's painting, you can hit the 5 key to reset your canvas. Um, I would say for the most part, let's see here. If I was going to be really strict about my brush size, I'm just kind of thinking probably, I'm thinking around 200 would be about right. So in other words, okay, if I was actually, in fact, I'm going to hit tab so I go to full screen. And, uh, we'll tab out if we need to change colors. Uh, if I was going to do this over again, what I'd probably do is actually try to identify a palette of colors consistent with uh, bobs, like um, sap green, yellow ochre, titanium white, and then just put dabs of it on the canvas so that I can do the whole thing in full canvas mode. So now, one question would be, should you be allowed to, um, first of all, undo definitely is not allowed. Okay. <laughs> okay. No undo. In the real world, you don't get to do undo. You have to use paint to fix your mistakes. Um, but what about zooming? Well, I would say, technically, again, I'm going to allow myself to cheat by rotating the canvas because I can't rotate my brush. But as far as zooming goes, I would say, let's see, if I hit the end key, go to actual size, this would be... Eh, I mean, this is kind of looking probably about the size of Bob's canvas, actually. So, if I move back a little bit, I would say to be authentic, you know, here I'm probably four feet away from the canvas. Here I'm, you know, right up to it. I actually want to kind of um, get a sense of, get a sense of what Bob would actually be seeing if he was standing there. And I think this is probably right he would he pretty darn close to his canvas and that also sort of underscores for me I think I'm wrong on my brush size I think my brush size should cheat should be about there let's see what that is that's what was that around 100 come on click one two um yeah yeah Probably about 120-ish. That might be slightly big, but that's okay. So, um, it's not that Bob wouldn't change brushes, because he would, but... Um, so my main reason to step back will be to, to sample colors from my um, canvas and... So I can, so I don't have to keep going back to the color selector. You know, in the real world, that's that's what happens is you have to actually mix your colors, right? Which I don't consider myself to be particularly good at. Let's be honest. I'm pretty lame when it comes to um, color in general. Okay. So again, what we're doing right now is simply blocking in the overall feeling of what Bob has in his painting. Just to get to the starting point, because again, on his painting, he's, he's already got all this done before the video started. 
um, I do find it interesting. Usually he would probably black, block in um, some blues and whatnot for the sky, but in this particular painting, I guess because it's autumn, he decided to um, to keep a more of a tan sort of color for the the background. And then I have to say he's also got a a um. The trunk of the tree of this this one tree. This has got a little bit more red in it. Okay, so what we want to do? I'm gonna go ahead and actually I did that the opposite. That was a one of my classic dys dyslexia moments. In order to get my brush thin, I need to simply rotate the the canvas and then just hit 5 to get back to back to normal. Okay, so now here I'm not going to try to copy his layout exactly, but I'm going to try to cleave pretty close. Okay. And sorry, 5 key Okay, so that does look pretty close to what Bob's got going on. Not exactly right. The the bottom part isn't quite as blended as what Bob did. But while I'm working here, what I'm going to do is go ahead and roll Bob's painting. Okay. What he did... Okay, yes. Early on in the process. Hmm, okay. So, very early in the process, I would say, actually. Um, I'm going to have to go ahead and make the brush big because what Bob did was he took a little bit more of a, of a bright red, mixed that into his paint a bit, and then taking kind of this rust color as a on the brush he went ahead and blended everything I don't know how I'm gonna emulate that except to maybe there we go that works so if I take this brush that I'm using and just bring the opacity down to about 25 percent or so it gives a really a really good blend that looks quite consistent with with what Bob was doing so this is actually what he did in the video he took this whole bottom section and again, I think he was quite correct with his red um, in order to get those those autumn hues. He he mixed. Um, okay, so Creed is having a hard time keeping up. It looks like. So what I'm going to do is I'm what I want to see here is if I actually go with a really bombastic bright red color, but bring the opacity way down. Does that give me a nice blend? That also brings a little tiny tint of the red into my paint overall and it seems to again as I say Krita is having a bit of ch a challenge keeping up okay yeah I mean I would say to really get both the blend and the tint with the oil paint I would say you wanna blend this in at around a 50% opacity that feels about right okay now another difference that I need to address right now is that this color Bob has very much a yellow um, a, a yellow cast to his background down here towards the bottom so this whole region is a little off in terms of its tonality and the idea would be apparently that and I'm leaving the brush transparent just because that's kinda how he was doing it he was very much um, just blending in the paint he wasn't smacking down bold 
bits of color. Uh, I'm sure he'll get to that, but okay. And so what you're seeing is that as we go down, the atmosphere would ostensibly be picking up some of the autumn hues, which I guess would also probably suggest that the the sun is kind of low on the horizon, maybe. So I'm going to just basically make this correction by blending in my orangey yellows down here towards the bottom, even bolder with the yellow. And as it goes to the horizon, we're picking up more and more orange. So that's actually pretty good. Uh, now what we need to do is get our get our trees back. So frankly, similar color. What I'm not going to allow myself to do is use a textured brush. The, the, the video I mentioned where the guy did a a painting ostensibly with Krita in the style of Bob Ross, he was using textured brushes to to put um, well, it's not like real brushes don't have texture. Of course they do. But I kind of felt like that was cheating. You know, if you're really going to try to do the oil painting thing, then you should take a more generic brush. It might have a bit of texture to it, but then you've got to actually use your brush technique to get the uh, get the texture into your painting. So, And, and it, by the way, with that in mind, it, w it is fair to argue that um, the if I was going to use only one brush, maybe it should actually have some texture to it. So, no big crime there. Just kind of something to be aware of. Okay. So now I'm going to, oops, I'm going to flip this. And once again... Okay, not perfect, but not bad. So, at this point, um, as I'm going to sort of analyze what I'm seeing here while I work, I would say that what you're kind of doing here is you're trying to get just an impressionist bead on the overall feeling of the forest. You're not trying to accurately capture what's there as much as you're trying to capture the the feeling of what's there in terms of color. Color and tonality value. Okay. This would probably be a slight bit more saturated. And actually, this is one reason why I kind of like um, backing up a bit. Let's see here. Yeah, that's that'd be like having your face right next to the canvas. So here's where we're getting more into um, a technique more similar to what you actually see in Bob's painting. So I'm going to just use my brush to smack in some texture. And as we go up, again, because we've got the, we have the backdrop um, of color that was laid on the canvas before we ever started, that allows us to uh, blend it quite nicely. Okay, not too horrid. Up here, this area, let's see here again, a bit of a dyslexia moment. I have a definite proclivity to flip the canvas 
the complete opposite direction that I need to to do what I'm trying to do. So he's got very much, let's just go ahead and do this the Bob Ross way. I think that's probably one of the great lessons of this exercise is to realize that if you want to get that type of a style, then you've got to do it the way he did it, which is very bold, very quick. And now what I'm going to do is just work a bit of texture back against that initial texture just kind of see how that works okay Bob's got a little bit more yellow up here so I'm gonna go ahead and just boom, boom, boom smack that in there and we'll see how this goes I mean I I certainly reserve the right to fail miserably but you never know until you try right Okay, I'm gonna. S yeah, I'm gonna kind of stop there as far as um, moving ahead without Bob. And what I'm gonna do then is roll the video here in just a second. Let's roll the video. See what Bob's actually up to while I take a sip of my coffee. Okay, again. Okay, Bob's next step, actually, was to, I need to go back to my 50% transparent brush because what he did was he took some of this fairly rich color down here and then he took a really big brush and just started smacking it in like this now you can see we're getting the this is where you can probably what should happen here in truth is you should have um, that's you can see Creed is trying to catch up with me what you really should have is the backdrop of color on your canvas so you can blend into it but also have a duplicate of the initial canvas with the color on a layer behind it so that if you get to the edges and start finding yourself um, digging into the alpha which is exactly what is happening here um, you will have your solid color behind it I'm gonna actually crank this up a bit don't feel like I'm getting quite enough um, penetration with the color. But all in all, that is kind of consistent with what Bob does in his painting. So he just decided he was going to get some of that color happening up in the corner as well. Okay, so we just smudge that around. Uh, we also see a fair amount of yellow in here, a greater amount of yellow than what I have. He was quite bold with it. And you also see him now blending up in here. So it does appear to me that this 75%-ish um, opacity on the brush probably is about right. Okay, so, so getting that sky mapped in there nicely. He's actually doing a fair amount of blending, which is kind of surprising me. I was expecting his technique to be a little bit more um, what I would, I guess, call boldly impressionistic. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see what he does. Um, I haven't watched a ton of Bob. I always preferred Bill Alexander. I was actually alive back when Bill Alexander did the oil painting show on PBS. And then, of course, Bob Ross took over. Um, now, what he's doing is he's mixing up 
essentially a yellow ochre, which this is pretty darn close to that. Adding a little bit of lemon yellow into it. And where is he going to smack it? He's going to smack it here. Okay, so what it looks like he's doing is he's saying, hey, at the top of these trees, let's put in this yellow ochre type of tonality. A um, little bit more saturation in there. Now this is where having a smaller brush and really uh, getting some texture going would be useful because but I'm not going to do that. I, I could it wouldn't be completely unfair because again you've got the you've got the texture of the canvas plus you've got the texture of the brush all working for you. So okay so now what he's doing is he's taking a little bit of a highlight and smacking back over that. That would be something like this. And this is where again I would think that having a brush that allows me to um, change direction would definitely make this a little easier. But that's okay. Okay, so we're going to just... So I would say generally my painting is going to be um, less textured than Bob's. Maybe if I go with a little smaller brush and, and just scribble more, that might help. Yeah, not bad. Let's just give it a little more transparency. Yeah, this this seems to work. Yeah, let's do the scribble technique. So, my brush is, you know, it's still in the eh, 150 pixel range. So, okay. Now what he's doing is he's coming over here with this yellowish color and very boldly um, smacking some texture out front here which definitely is always a great technique because it, it sort of leads the eye it tricks the eye into feeling like it sees something there that may or may not actually be there it's kind of the randomness of nature kind of thing so based on that texture style what he's doing with his brush I'm just gonna do some more of that than I'm seeing him do at the moment just to see if I like the way it looks if it gives the right feeling um, let's go back here yeah we're okay yeah yeah cuz I don't get any of the texture he gets with his canvas so I don't even know what my brush size is here but I'm gonna just I'm trying to find the sweet spot where one brush size would sort of do the trick for everything so I would say that the the 75% to 80% opaque on the brush seems to be very helpful in finding that sweet spot and yep he's just he's actually just kinda going bananas on the texture okay let's just do that so what I'm seeing is sort of scribble 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 let me check something so yeah, and my brush size is actually about 80. Okay, so now he's taking his knife, but what he's doing with the knife, I mean, you wouldn't have to use the knife to do it. You're just, I'm just going to kind of follow the concept without necessarily. Um, so, I mean, it would be something like this. He's basically taking his knife, kind of going like that. So, I guess if we're going to emulate that, we would do something like this. Okay, I want a little more red in there. Okay, so now this is interesting. Now what he's doing is he's putting in oh boy, and I can't on his on his canvas because he's zoomed in right now, I cannot tell where he is on the canvas. So let me while we wait to figure that out, I'm going to try to get a color so it looks like he's putting some sort of yes okay he's putting a cabin I guess that's why they call it the old weathered barn okay so I'm gonna go ahead and go opaque here and maybe smack this back down go okay so what you're seeing is something like this so he's just blocking in the silhouette of the barn 
Okay, so let's just get the silhouette in here. And the way he's doing it, yeah, it looks to me like he's just, yeah, and he is getting right close to the, the canvas. So I, I, in other words, I pretty much have it right. I sort of had to guess because of the, um, because of how zoomed in the camera is on the show. So if we kind of go like this, and then down at the bottom, all he's doing is kind of blending it in. Okay, this should be interesting because he's he's grabbing some titanium white, so you know it's gonna. It's time to start making the the shape and the texture of the barn come out. Okay, so what he what he's done is he's basically gone here. He's sort of split the difference to a a little bit of a creamy um, color. I'm gonna go back to 80% opaque here. And now to do what Bob's doing, I would have to turn the canvas about like this. Okay, this is where the texture would be enormously helpful. Okay, so I'm going to go like this, flatten my canvas out, and then I'm going to have to bring the brush back down to about 80. Okay, and this is what Bob did. And so this is nowhere near as cool looking as Bob's because Bob's got all the texture of the... Um, of the brush and the canvas working for him. So if we kind of put in maybe a faint guide there just so I can see what I'm doing. Okay. And now to really emulate what Bob's doing, uh, I guess we'll kind of go back to our dark color and, and just kind of blur that in a bit. Okay, and then I guess the only way I can cheat here a bit is to make my brush smaller and just introduce some scribbly noise into the into the brush strokes. That seems to help. Okay, so now what he's doing is he's taking some orange, fairly saturated orange tone. Okay, that's interesting. And what he's going to do is he's going to... He's actually just scumbling this in across here to just give this some texture and then he's using the edge of the brush pretty big with a little bit more highlight to just put a right in the center of the barn some suggestions of an edge that the I think ostensibly the sun would be catching there that's better that's kind of what I'm looking for Okay, and then down here on the lower part of the the roof, he's being a little bolder with his color. Like this. Yeah, that's not bad. Here, we would have to turn the canvas to make this work. He's being pretty pretty bold here with his highlights. I'm going to just smack in some white and just see what happens. Yeah, he's definitely going to be he's being real bold with his highlights. Okay, uh, I have to correct that because I'm not allowed to um, not allowed to use undo. Not allowed to hit control Z here, folks. Okay. No cheating. Okay, so I'm going to pause Bob just for a second because in order to get the type of texture he has, I'm going to have to um, turn my brush, which in this case turning the brush really means turning the canvas just because we don't have a way to turn the brush so I want to just get a little bit more randomized something here and then towards the bottom he's really allowing the the darkness of the barn to just blend this into the ground boom 
so how about that? I'm actually talking like Bob Ross, I think. Okay, and I would say, let's say we want to probably tighten up that edge. And then counter it again with a just a little bit of highlight. Okay, let's flip that back around. And as you can see, we have a little bit of a perspective error here. So let's just fix it this way. No digital tools allowed. Just painting. Okay. Well, that's definitely interesting. Now, I would say that the... Excuse me, taking a drink of my coffee. I would say that for me, the scale of the barn feels a little wrong. It feels a little small based on what I was seeing with the trees, but... I will also say that that is true of Bob's painting as well. So for that reason, I'm going to go with it. There is one thing I want to correct here, though. That's better. So the cool thing about this process, I would say so far, is that I'm definitely feeling the that as I'm going along, I'm actually starting to, like by being more zoomed out and just feeling and seeing the uh, the overall impression of what my colors are doing and whatnot, I feel like just by copying Bob for this very short period of time, I'm already starting to um, adopt some of the ways he must be thinking while he's, while he's working. And that's always kind of cool. That's definitely a cool thing. I want to better delineate this edge. You know, I like the way that causes the sense of the shadows to sort of cut in. Like so. That feels pretty good. Um, and then I would say cutting in that edge a little bit better. And then perhaps running a slight um, a slight highlight might be kind of sort of the order of the day. Okay, so I'm going to pull back here. I'm going to hit the end key and then just, yeah, I think we're in good shape. Let's just keep going now. Um, you know, Bob's about mm, 13 minutes into it. Okay. Uh, that's interesting. So what he just did, this is really interesting. Just goes to show how um, confident this guy was. Because what he just did was he took a brush, took his knife actually, and just went like this. Okay, and let's just go fully opaque with a really dark. That's what he just did. And when he did it, he actually wound up getting the door a little bit slanted. I mean, he actually got his, <laughs> his angle off a bit on the door. Now, I don't know about this. I'm not, I didn't see if he did this, but it looked like maybe what he did was when he put the paint on the knife, he actually put the, the right, um, you might call it the heel, of the knife edge, I think he allowed a little bit of a lighter brown color to catch the heel so that when he did this single stroke down, it actually automatically caused a little bit of a highlight to, to be chopped in right here. Okay, so now I'm adding just a little bit more, a um, little bit more red to that uh, highlight. So again, I will tell you that um, 
Bob is definitely uh, got the goods on me in terms of texture. But yeah, he's just, all he's doing is just dragging this down. That's it. And then he's using the knife edge to just cut in the, the extents of it. So I think the digital analog to that would be to just take your brush and kind of go like this. Just tighten up the the border of that edge. Okay, and now what he's doing is whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Need to hit the five key. Okay. Alright, so now what he's doing is he's saying, okay, let's let's just let's put a trail leading out from this. I'm gonna go ahead and go opaque now. Okay, I see what he's doing. Let's just have a trail, you know, a path to the door, if you will. And we'll keep getting the brush bigger so that it kind of just does this. So we're just making this path go in perspective. And I might have to pause the video here. So I definitely will say that just right, right out of the gate here that to simply copy the work of one of your favorite artists. I'm not saying Bob's one of my favorites. I think he's okay. <laughs> Truth be known, but um, definitely a good exercise. Definitely a really good thing to do. Okay, so now what he's doing is he's taking some highlight, yellow ochre kind of thing, and chopping in uh, an edge here, and even actually allowing a little bit of, uh, okay, a little bit of organic material to be growing around the around your old barn in the woods and he also was kind of using the yellow ochre to chop in this edge right here this border um, I've, I've noticed the same thing uh, of late uh, playing piano too by just being really disciplined and not just plunking around but really trying to um, listen to stuff that challenges you and and copy it as best you can I've always found that um, that's that's how you improve the fastest by far by far is just by copying like you're not going to benefit as much generally for most people practicing scales let's say as you would by just learning songs just learn actual songs that people recognize and you know and then you also then have the means to actually entertain people and do something useful with your instrument as well. Okay, so now what we're seeing is kind of interesting. He's going to take, I'm going to take this color, just desaturate it, and then what he's doing is he's just basically adding some noise elements to this, um, this path. Okay, so I'm going to do my best to scribble it in there like he did. And then what he did was he actually grabbed some green some pretty saturated green and just um, decorated it a bit like that and now he's taken really bold colors and smacking in more um, detail around the the edge of this barn so I think the idea is that there's sort of overgrowth that's built up and if we're going to copy what Bob's doing, we would want to go something like this. We'd go like that, probably, and then work back into it this way. That would be, yeah, it'd be roughly analogous to the way he's doing it, actually. And I could totally see that being a technique I would use more often. Uh, and then you could maybe put a little bit of a highlight and just kind of chop, chop a little bit into that just to give it some variety and color. Now he's over here doing the essentially the same thing. Basically saying, well, let's let's just kind of get some stuff going here this way and then yeah, not bad. I don't like that. I'm going to go ahead and work some dark back into that. So now I'm going to take Okay, so yeah. Now what he's doing is he's getting real specific with the um, with the foliage up here. So he's kind of diverting back away from the barn. 
and getting into back up here into the trees. Don't know if he got bored. Um, he's mixing a real brownish color, which kind of looks a lot like what you got here on the barn, frankly. And I have no idea where he's going to apply this. Okay. Right on, Bob. Okay. Should have seen that coming. Okay, so here's what he did. He said, let's go up here. And let's just... Now this is one of the things I do like about Bob. I like the way he just really, really nice sense of composition. So now what he's going to do is he's going to go in here with a little smaller brush. Um, and what we would do is he's actually smacking it on with the knife. So I'll try to emulate that as best I can. So obviously the these tree trunks would be picking up some highlights from the from the sun. And now it looks like he's he's got a very coppery type of color. I don't know, I'm guessing he's gonna put some branches on these trees, maybe? When I'm all done here what I'll do is um I'll I'll put the I'll, I'll I'll show you a comparison of the the Bob Ross version of this with mine. We'll just see see how we did, right? Okay, so what I'm going to do is yeah, this this is what he's doing is I'm going to have to go pretty small on my brush here. Otherwise, I'm going to have to keep turning the canvas like constantly. So let's just go ahead and go to straight up and down and He's definitely going pretty crazy with the branches, so I'm going to just do this so that I can emulate what he's doing as well as possible without it taking too long. So, you know, a little bit of blending going on. We probably should actually have that opacity back at the 80 type of range. And then again, going in and just judiciously allowing for a little bit of highlight and then what he's now doing is he's taking some of this type of color and saying okay let's really kind of do a light version of that and put some foliage on these branches let's make these branches pop a little bit with some highlights and I like that that's where that's where Bob's impressionism is really working it just really makes the the tree pop. You know, those little smacks of light are so useful. Right? Look at that. That's that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Okay, so now what he's doing is he's again, I don't know if he's getting bored or what, but he's going over here to this tree trunk, which by the way in my version kind of got lost. So I'm going to sort of delineate that in a little bit more again. And then what we need to do is, and I'm staying zoomed out so that I can really keep the the big picture in mind here. Um, up here, what, what my painting lacks is the... And I'm gonna pause Bob because well it looks like okay. Looks like he just signed it. So <laughs> so I guess he's done. So I'm gonna do a couple quick corrections to better match what he had because he definitely had this area up here blending up into the sky a bit. And he also had sort of this yellow ochre kind of thing creating a little bit more texture throughout here um, so I guess I would say my great mistake here would be maybe in the sky but it's not too bad I just wanna get this chiseled out here so that it kinda sorta matches 
the um, the Bob Ross version a little better and so now I'm gonna hit the tab key basically um, in let's pull out so we're kind of full screen and then when Bob's done here I assume he's gonna show the actual entire picture and let's see I'm I'm just waiting for Bob to to do that once Bob shows us the whole picture we'll transition over to his so I'll, I'll go ahead and cheat a few last moment tweaks um, while we wait for that big picture view of Bob's painting Well, I, I have to say that doing in the, doing this, this has been a good exercise, and, um, you know, I could also totally see where um, this translates to actual oil paint pretty nicely. So, I'm just kind of squinting into this, looking for some opportunities to fake some contrast okay and here's Bob's version uh, actually hold on a second what I'm gonna do is zip back here so that when they show the painting I can give you a still shot of it so he's about to boom okay so here's here's Bob's version okay and now what I'm gonna do is zoom into a similar sized uh, size on mine so here's there's mine there's Bob so you can see you without a doubt that the the actual thickness of the oil paint I would say the ability to turn your brush He's got way more rich contrast. If I was going to um, try to, if I was going to try to cheat this, uh, well, obviously I would want to have a canvas, but probably what I would do is hit Control M and just do something like this to get the rich reds happening more something like that so let's pull back from this and now compare again you know not too bad not too bad I think if I used an actual canvas texture and was a little freer with my brushes without being so strict about using the palette knife for everything I think I could maybe do a little better job on the texture aspects of it so with that um, that was actually a heck of a lot of fun took just under an hour uh, I imagine I'll probably do this again and as you guys know, there will be more.